Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.0 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. Welcome to Tutorial 15, Field Operations. Today we're going to learn how to do a conventional takeoff, conventional landing, which is an emergency procedure, uh, a short takeoff, and a short landing, all here at beautiful Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. So, let's get started with our setup for the first conventional takeoff. Uh, also, note that I'm going to be flying uh, a pattern here at Nellis, uh, just to allow us to do uh, each type of takeoff and landing in fairly quick succession. So, a bit of initial setup. Uh, when I'm going to be operating at an airfield, I always like to have my TACAN programmed. So, let's go TACAN. Uh, here at Nellis, we are on 12 X ray, so I enter 12 and I turn on my TACAN. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my EHSD for flying the pattern. When I'm just flying locally in the pattern, I don't care particularly about the chart. So I'm going to go map and map off. That gives me much clearer symbology for things like the, the TACAN. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a course line. Uh, and that will help me fly my pattern more accurately. So for the... Uh, for the runway that we're going to be using today, we're going to use 03 right. Uh, it has a, a heading of 029. -er. So I can hold the course switch here and I get my line. Uh, and as soon as the numbers appear up here on the UFC, I can just enter 029 and press enter. We now have a nice uh, heading line showing us the orientation of the runway. This will make it much easier to do the, the circuit. And today's circuit will be flown uh, right hand. Uh, and it'll be a kind of military style circuit, so we only really have a, an upwind, a downwind, and a final. We're not flying base or crosswind uh, on a, uh, a setup like this. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little look at the VREST page uh, so that we can make all of our calculations. Uh, let's go into VREST and let's choose STO. The STO page is used for the short takeoff and the conventional takeoff. Uh, and I'm going to pre-calculate a bunch of values here, many of which we don't actually need for the conventional takeoff, but we will need them later for the short uh, takeoff, and so I'd rather already have them. So with the STO mode boxed, uh, we get some options in the ODU here. We're interested in field data, so let's press field data, and we're going to enter the runway distance. This will help us calculate things like our abort speeds and, and uh, distances. So I know that the runway here is 10,051 feet, so I enter that. And if you want to know where to get that information, bring up your kneeboard and page through your kneeboard until you get to uh, the chart for your airfield. This is Nellis. So all of the information I'm going to use, I got from this chart. Uh, runway heading, as we said before, we're on 029 -er for runway 030 right. Uh, and wind. Uh, wind today is, let me see. I got that from the briefing, 226 degrees for 5 knots, enter. For some reason it defaults to giving me this, I don't really know what that's all about. We can also choose if the runway is dry or wet, but we're going to leave that. We're going to come out to field data now, and outside air temperature today is 20 degrees Celsius, and our field elevation uh, at, the, at the touchdown point where we're going to be taking off from, it's 1826 feet. So, fairly high. Uh, and that's it. Those are all the values we need to enter. And if we zoom down on the right MPCD here, we can see that our abort speed and our, our distance are not filled in. We have to click abort, and it will then calculate those values based on what I've entered. Any values that have been supplied by the pilot have an asterisk next to them, so you know that they deviate from what the system uh, had calculated itself. So, uh, we have an abort speed of 176 knots. Now, something to keep in mind is that <laughs> the limit for the wheels on this aircraft are 180 knots. So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be on the ground at anywhere near this speed. Uh, and for a conventional takeoff, we do rotation at 135 knots. So basically what this is telling us is that this runway is so long that we can abort at any time. It's actually suggesting that we could abort after takeoff. We could actually take off, abort, and land again and still have enough space to stop. So uh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing to know. Uh, and in things like the nozzle and the NRAS and so on, we don't care about that because for a, a conventional takeoff, we're not rotating the nozzles. So none of these values apply. Uh, the last little bit of kind of calculation setup that we'll do 
is for a conventional takeoff, we want to go to VSTALL mode and we want to enter an NRAS of 135 knots. That just means that the airspeed, we don't actually rotate the nozzles, but it means that the airspeed will become boxed at 135 knots, and that's our little reminder that at that stage uh, we should rotate. Uh, and rotate very, very gently, because the Harrier has a long tail, and really anything more than about two degrees nose up, and you're going to scrape that tail. I tend to actually just rotate the witch's hat, which is here, to the horizon line, and I don't even really go above the horizon line because it's too risky to do anything other than that in a conventional takeoff. So, for conventional takeoff, we're going to make sure that flaps are in automatic. Anti skid is on, H2O is off. You can use H2O for conventional takeoff, but the aircraft would have to be very heavy to warrant us doing that. And with all of that done, we can now taxi to runway uh, 03 right, which is actually just ahead. So, parking brake off, and away we go. Going to leave the nozzles at 10 degrees for this type of takeoff, um, and we're going to leave the flaps in automatic. And we'll transition the nozzles to 0 degrees after takeoff, but uh, we'll leave them at that value the whole way down the runway, because it gives us just a touch more lift, which is always nice. It means that we're less likely to smack the tail off the ground. So we're just going to taxi past 03 left here. And takeoffs and landings today will be on 03 right, and the circuit will be right hand. And we use nose wheel steering up to about 60 knots. Uh, at that stage, we let go of the nose wheel steering button because our rudder should be effective at that speed and we should have no further need of it, which makes it less likely that we're going to skid all over the place on the runway. So here we are, 03 right, and I'm going to hold it on the brakes here. Also note that uh, here we're going to fly the circuit at 250 knots and 1000 feet. Oh, there's somebody else just taking off. I'll give them a little bit of separation before I make my way down the runway. So, uh, we're going to run up to 70% N1. There we go. Stable. Off the brakes, and we're going to go 100%. And we're accelerating down the runway. We've got a little bit of a crosswind today, but not too much. We're boxed. We can go up. We're going to bring our witch's hat all the way up to the pull-up queue. And we're going to go gear up. We're going to transition Altitude. the nozzles Altitude. forward. Altitude. And we're going to go Altitude. nav mode. And we're going to bring Altitude. the power Altitude. back Altitude. because we're accelerating too fast. We don't want to. We want to sit around about 250 knots. And that is the takeoff. That is how fast it happens in conventional mode. And we're going to bring the nose down because we're at about a thousand feet. Okay, and we're going to begin our right turn into the downwind, and we'll just maintain a thousand feet and maintain 250 knots as best we can. <clears throat> Bit more power. And once we've flown this circuit, we're going to immediately go into a conventional landing. Uh, so our reciprocal is about 210 degrees, so I should be rolling out pretty soon now. Okay, uh, and you'll notice that looking at the EHSD that I am being blown to the right a bit uh, because of the wind, so I'm going to maintain... I'm not actually going to fully correct, but I'm going to pull a little bit left from what should be my, my reciprocal somebody else whizzing around in the circuit. Let's manage that speed a bit better, bring the power back. Okay, we're now going to get set up. We're going to get ourselves back into V-stall mode. <clears throat> back to around about uh, 1,000 feet and about 250 knots. Uh, we want to, once we make our turn into the final, we want to be at about 600 feet when we begin the final. We want to maintain between 10 and 12 degrees angle of attack, which is here on the HUD. And um, 
we want to be putting our flight path marker on the beginning of the runway. That's us 3.5 miles from the Takan. At this stage, I'm going to begin my turn. And I'm going to go gear down, just to begin configuration. I'm going to let the speed bleed off, and I'm actually going to let the aircraft descend as well. Because, uh, like I said, we want to get ourselves down to about 600 feet. And for... Yeah, there we go. We can actually be guided by what throttle setting to use by the angle of attack. So we want to make sure that we're not exceeding 12 degrees. I am actually... Well, units, in fact. I don't want to go beyond 12 units. I was there, so I throttled up until I'm not anymore. Uh, we're getting a little bit low, so I'm going to throttle up a bit more and bring my nose high. It's all about making constant corrections. Now I'm getting a bit fast, and my AOA is getting low, so I throttle back. I can see 03 right now, so I'm going to start to uh, level the wings. And yeah, my AOA is getting too low, so I throttle back. And I want to get my flight path marker onto the start of the runway. I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to increase throttle. There we go, there we go. So, flight path marker's on the start of the runway. Angle of attack is around about where it should be. We want to be guided by angle of attack and flight path marker, not by speed. But um, that means that the speed will be different depending upon the weight of your aircraft. That's about right. That's about right. That's looking good. We just want to keep it coming down like this. Now, you would not normally do a conventional landing, by the way. This is kind of considered an emergency procedure. And in particular, we're going to want to use the nozzles uh, to reverse thrust on pull touchdown. Up, pull up. We're down, power off, nozzles all the way forwards, and we're going to bring the power back up. Use your rudder. Don't use nose wheel steering until you've got the speed under control. Uh, I'm going to bring the throttle up to about 70%. You'll see that we get pretty good braking with the nozzles like that. Speed's under control, I throttle off, and I can return the nozzles to 10%. And then stop using just the tow brakes. And there you go. That is how you conduct a conventional landing. Now, like I said, you would not normally do a conventional landing. That's uh, an emergency procedure. You would do it if the aircraft is heavy, or you've had some kind of systems failure or whatever. I'm now going to get set back up, and I will then demonstrate a short takeoff and a short landing, which is more commonly the way you're going to fly the Harrier at an airfield. Conventional takeoff is fine, but conventional landing is dicey. I'll be right back. Okay, so you join me back on runway 03 right. We're now going to conduct a short takeoff followed by a short landing. So let's take a little look at the V-Rest page again. We're now going to use the nozzle stop and the nozzle rotation speed. Uh, we're going to do a dry takeoff because the aircraft is fairly light. So we're going to rotate nozzles at 100 knots and they're going to be rotated to 55 degrees. So let's get that set up. Uh, over here on the left console, we're going to go nozzle stop, 55 degrees. Uh, we're going to go um, flaps to STOL for this type of takeoff. We're not going to use water, uh, again, because uh, the aircraft is indeed fairly light. Uh, we're going to use 10 degrees nozzle going down the runway, uh, and then when we hit our uh, nozzle rotation speed, we will use the nozzles to bounce us into the air. And speaking of the nozzle rotation speed, we'll hit uh, VSTOL mode, we'll make sure we've got NRAS boxed, and we will enter 100 knots which is our new NRAS. Uh, airspeed will be boxed at that point, and we will rotate the nozzles. Okay, so let's get ready. I'm on the tow brakes. Uh, I'm going to run up, and we're basically going to do the same pattern again that we did for the conventional takeoff, but this time with short takeoffs and landings. So we've ran up to 70%. Nozzles at 10 degrees. We're off the brakes, and we're going to go full power. Wait for the box on the airspeed. Box, we pull the nozzles, and then we pull our nose all the way up to the crets. We go gear up. We Altitude. bring the nozzles Altitude. to 25 degrees initially. Altitude. Make sure Altitude. that we are continuing to climb. We go Altitude. Altitude. flaps to auto, 
and then we transition the nozzles all the way forwards now. And we'll pop the HUD into nav mode. Airspeed's coming up, let's bring the power back. Altitude is correct, let's bring the nose down. And we have fully transitioned into normal flight. Perfect. Okay, that was a good short takeoff. Now, let's begin our right hand. Let's control our altitude and speed as we come around. And let's try and do the same thing again, but this time for a short landing. Let's control that airspeed. Round we come. You need to do quite a tight turn here at Nellis to avoid these hills. That's fine. We're in a Harrier after all. Okay, and we're going to roll it out about here. Alt altitude, altitude. Get some altitude warnings. And I'm going to keep the speed under control. Passing the airfield on the right now. I'm going to wait for about 3.5 DME, and then I'm going to configure the aircraft and begin my turn. And in preparation for that, we're going to enter V-stall uh, mode on the HUD. And continue outbound. Three miles. Point five miles. Okay, gear down, and we begin our turn. Throttle up, because we know we're going to lose quite a lot of speed with all that extra drag. I'm going to put the flaps into STOL mode at this stage. Throttle back a bit, actually. I'm maintaining a little bit too high of an airspeed. That's better. Speed's coming down, altitude's coming down. Airfield is coming into sight. We're a bit high, but that's okay. We've gone through the center line, but we will correct. I'm going to bring the nozzles to 60 degrees. Actually, 55, sorry, in this case. I'm going to maintain the witch's hat on the horizon and use throttle to control my rate of descent. Bringing the aircraft back to the right now. <laughs> That's interesting, an AI wingman just crashed at the threshold. That's exciting. I'm going to keep that in, that's just entertaining. Uh, so notice our airspeed. Our airspeed is much, much lower than the approach that we flew uh, when we were doing conventional landing. But lucky for us, all that smoke is kind of obscuring the touchdown point. So I'm going to maintain Witchy's hat on the horizon and use throttle to control that rate of descent. Uh, and then as we get close to the ground, we're going to want to flare very slightly, but we don't want to flare more than two degrees because otherwise we risk having a tail strike. So through this smoke, <laughs> you couldn't plan this stuff, could you? Okay, I've got visibility of the runway again. Uh, so, maintaining the witchy's hat all the way down. And look how slow an approach this is. This is so gentle, so slow. Uh, it's a, a much easier way to land the aircraft. And much gentler on the undercarriage, which can be a little bit delicate. There we go. 90 knots at touchdown. Power off. On the brakes. And now on the nose wheel steering. And look at that. How quickly did we manage to get that stopped? We're not even at Bravo Taxiway. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we do that. So, that those are the, the standard uh, airfield ops. Um, conventional to take off, conventional landing, short to take off, and short landing. I hope that you all enjoyed that. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe, like, comment, uh, it's all super helpful for the channel and for me, and you know, personally, I really enjoy the engagement. It's great to be in touch with uh, with all of you. So, fly safe, 
and I'll see you all next time.